hey, if you're looking to create a set of financial projections for a recreational equipment rental business, so this could be anything from renting out things like kayaks or skis or e-bikes to renting out recreational vehicles, so RVs, boats, and kind of anything in between. If you're looking to create financials, a forecast for potential investors and lenders for this type of business, then you've come to the right place. And because we have built this financial projection spreadsheet template that I'm gonna walk you through that's built specifically for this type of business model. I'm gonna walk through how to fill the model out. And before I dive too far into that, just a couple things to point out. We'll put a link to this template in the description of the video below, so you can go grab that link. And also, if you stick around to the end of the videos, I thank you for sticking around. We'll give you access to a coupon code that you can use to get a discount on this particular template. Before I dive in to show you how the template works, just a little bit of background about me. I am the co-founder of Projection Hub, where we help entrepreneurs create financial projections for investors and lenders. And we have about 100 different industry-specific financial model templates. And so this is one of our newest templates. I'm really excited about sharing this with you. And also just a bit of my background before I spent over a decade as an SBA lender, a small business administration lender, where we made loans to small businesses of all sorts of different shapes and sizes. And we closed over a thousand loans during my time there. And so I've seen a lot of loan applications, a lot of financial projections related to loan applications. And one thing I've learned is that although a good set of financial projections is not going to help or is that going to automatically mean you're approved for a loan? It could be the thing that causes you to get declined. <laughs> if you really screw up your projections, you might get declined because of that. We saw that often. And so my hope here is to try to help you avoid that, avoid getting the automatic no from a lender or an investor because your projections don't make any sense. So my hope is we're gonna help you get these on the right track. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into how this works. So we're gonna start here on the at a glance tab. And this is at the end of the process, once you filled out the entire model, you'll get a number of different charts and graphs and tables that you'll be able to pull into a business plan or into a pitch deck. You're also going to get a cash flow summary, an income statement summary for five years and a balance sheet summary, as well as the income statement, cash flow and balance sheet all broken down by month for each of the five years. So you get that monthly level detail as well as annual summaries. Now, in order to produce those reports, we have a bit of work to do to input all of our assumptions. And I'm gonna walk through how to do that. Now, the, the first thing you need to know is that all the assumptions that are highlighted in blue or all the cells that are highlighted in blue are assumptions that you can change without breaking something in the model. And so we have entered in some example data here. We're gonna say that we're starting our projections in January 1st, 2024, with a starting cash balance of 75,000. And that cash balance is coming from a personal investment of 75,000 that we enter in here. And we have the ability to put in accounts receivable and accounts payable terms. Now I've set these to zero. My assumption is that if you're renting out equipment, you're probably going to get paid upfront. You're not, you're unlikely to be providing terms to your customers where they can pay you in 30 days or pay you in 60 days, right? They're probably going to be paying you upfront. That's why we have these both set to zero. Accounts payable, we have average days to pay expenses of 15. So this just means that if you get build for an expense, you're going to have that paid within 15 days as an assumption here. Okay, so now we can enter in our fixed assets. These are assets other than the equipment that we have available for rent. So this would be in this example, let's say we have a space that we're renting and we did $40,000 worth of leasehold improvements to the space. And we did that in month one here. And we put salvage costs as zero because that means this is this 40,000 will be fully depreciated over the life of the asset over the seven years. And the equipment we have at $10,000 worth of equipment. This is other than the rental equipment again. So this could be computers or printers equipment for the business, but not that you are renting out. Okay, now we're gonna get into the vehicles and rental equipment. So we've, we're gonna, in this example, look at kind of two different options here. We have RVs, we have two RVs, so like rental vehicles, and then some kind of recreational equipment, some kayaks and e-bikes. Now you have the ability to put in the number of units of each type of equipment. So we, for the RVs, we just have one. We're saying that we purchased it, but you could also lease the equipment by changing this drop down to lease. You'll notice that if you select lease, it's gonna black out the sections that are now irrelevant. If you're leasing, you just got that monthly payment per unit over here. But if you're purchasing, then we need to know these other details. We need to know the purchase price, the years of useful life, like how long will you have this unit available to, to rent out? And then what's your salvage cost or basically what after that useful life, how much do you think you can, you'll sell it for, even if it's just scrap in this case. And then what month will you purchase this unit? So we're saying month one. And then how much are you financing? So we've got a $150,000 RV. We are assuming if you look up here, you can see an equation, 
8% of the purchase price. So 90% financing of the purchase price at an 8% rate over 72 months. And we can enter in the same similar assumptions for the second RV that we're saying, hey, we're gonna buy a second RV in month 37. All right, now we've got some kayaks as an example here. We're gonna enter in 10 units. We're gonna buy a batch of 10 kayaks here, a purchase price of 300 per unit. And in this example, we're gonna say, we're not going to finance. We're not gonna get a loan to purchase some kayaks. We'll just pay that out of our initial investment in cash flow. And then finally, we've got two sets of e-bikes that we're gonna purchase at 5,000 per unit. And in this case, we are actually going to finance, finance them. So we'll finance the 100% financing in this example. Now, finally, we're gonna have an SBA loan down here. So we have the individual financing assumptions here for the equipment. So you can put in loans this way, but you can also put in a loan down here that's not tied necessarily to any specific equipment. So this could just be an SBA loan, for example, for working capital. So we've got a $100,000 loan at 8% over 84 months. Okay, so that is our input assumptions tab. Next, we're gonna to go to our revenue assumptions and cost of goods sold. So we've got two kind of categories here, recreational equipment that we're, we have set up as per hour rentals. And then if, what we're calling rental vehicles, which are per day rentals. Now you could change the language here if you wanted to call this something else, but the idea is that we have two categories of either per hour or per day rental type. And we've got RV one and two, and we need to select the revenue type. And we're gonna say, okay, they are rental vehicles. And these items are recreational equipment. We've got that selected from the dropdown. So then the first thing we'll do is add in our assumptions about our recreational equipment rentals. So the kayaks and the e-bikes. And so we're gonna see the number of units. This is all piped in from that input assumptions tab. And then we can say, what's the average rentals per week that we're going to have for these each group here? and the average rate per hour and the average hours per rental. And then this is any additional fee or rental income that you're gonna get beyond just the rental rate. So if you sell insurance or some additional fee, you can add that in here. Okay, so now if we're selling kayaks, it may be that you are, this is a seasonal business, right? It's gotta be nice weather when you're selling the kayak, renting out the kayaks, right? So maybe we have 0% capacity utilized here in January, February, and March. And then as spring comes, April, and then we can go up to 50%. And then we're saying we're at 100% of our operations, 100% capacity here in the summer and warmer months. And then what will happen is this seasonal pattern will just replicate itself for the following years. It will follow that same seasonal pattern here. You can also add some cost of goods sold items. So that could be things like cleaning and wear and tear on the equipment. And we can set these up as a per rental cost. So we're saying it's gonna take 50 cents per rental per unit for cleaning and $2 per rental for wear and tear on the, the e-bikes and the kayaks in this example. Okay, so now we've got the rental vehicle section here, which is the RVs. So we've got the two RVs piped in and we can say the average days rented per month is going to be 20 with an average rate per day of 300 an average charge per mile of 50 cents average total miles per day of 50 and the average billable miles per day of 30. so let me just go back and explain how this might how you might use this section so if you think about a rental car you might have a day rate and then on top of that you might get a certain number of miles that kind of come with the day rate so you're you've got 50 miles a day that you can drive but anything over the 50 miles per day that you drive you're going to get charged some additional rate per mile so that's how you could enter in this average charge per mile and we could say okay we're going to the average total miles per day that we're actually driving let's say it's 80 miles okay so we're actually going to drive or we think the renters are going to drive 80 miles but the first 50 miles we're going to give them free or we're going to give them as part of their day rate so then we're only gonna have 30 miles per day that's billable. So hopefully that makes sense how you can build that into the model. And then you can add in additional fees per rental. So again, this could be things like insurance for this example. And we may have some seasonality for the RV business as well. So you can enter in some the percentages that kind of, well, you'll see the seasonality fluctuate with revenue. So if, if you change this to 100%, then you'll see we're up to 7,300 in monthly revenue compared to just 10% at $730. Your cost of goods sold for this would be maintenance repairs and cleaning as an example. So for cleaning, maybe we say it's gonna be $50 per rental to clean out the RV. And then we think our, our expenses are 10 cents a mile for these repairs and maintenance of the RVs. And that is really the, that's everything you need to do to calculate the revenue and the cost of goods sold. 
So we'll move over to our operating expense tab here and we can see different operating expenses like advertising, insurance, license plates. You'll be able to set these up expenses up on a number of different cost drivers. So you could have a fixed dollar amount, which means it's just the same dollar amount each month. Like maybe insurance is fixed. It's just 300 bucks a month. But then maybe you have advertising and you want to make that a percentage of revenue. So we have that set as a percentage of total revenue here at 0.07. So that would be 7% of total revenue is going towards advertising. And this will just automatically add 7% of revenue as an advertising cost each month. And then you might have expenses like license plates that would be on a per vehicle basis. You can also do a per labor hour expense as well. And then finally, our last input tab here is our input staff and owner draw tab. So we can enter in different part-time staff. And so the idea here is that we're going to say in year one, we are going to pay $2,500 per month for a part-time employee. And they're going to start on month four and end on month 10, because again, this is a seasonal business and we're going to have three of these part-time staff. Okay. And then after month 10, we're not going to have these staff anymore. And it's going to go back, go back down to zero for that staffing. But then in month 16 through month 22, we're going to add the part, part-time staff again. Right. And each year we increase what we're paying per month by hundred dollars. So that's what we have set up here as an example. And then maybe we also have a, an admin and a manager of the business being paid $4,000 and $1,500 per month respectively. And these positions are saying start in month one, end in month 60. So they go the whole way throughout the five-year model. They're not laid off during the off season. So that is all of our input tabs. And that brings us back to our at a glance tab where we can see our profit and loss as well as some of our key summary data and key ratios along with various graphs and charts. If you have any questions or you could use some help filling this out, please reach out to us at support at projectionhub.com and we can make sure to help walk you through this. Also, I just wanted to, again, as a thank you for watching to the end of the video, if you go down to the description of our video below, you will find a link to a form that you can fill out. If you fill out that form, we're going to send you a coupon code as a thank you. And this will be our most up-to-date coupon code that you can use at checkout to get a discount on this particular template as our thank you to you. Hope you take advantage of that. And if you, again, have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks.